I want to talk to you today about your heart rate variability. It's abbreviated to HRV and it has a lot to do with your resilience, capacity to deal with stress and adapt to stress. So the heart rate variability is looking at the change in time between heartbeats. Sometimes we think, oh, my heart should just beat, beat, beat be like a metronome, right? No, no difference in between it. But actually a healthy heart can do beep beep and then beep beep. It has that resiliency, that variability. It's, it's kind of like a car. You don't just want a car to have brakes and you don't just want it to have an accelerator. You want to be able to go back and forth, right? To be a, to be a healthy uh, driver and a safe driver. So that's the same for your heart. And um, when we talk about why we need this variability. So you don't want to compare your number to somebody else necessarily because with age it changes. Uh, as we get older it gets lower. Elite athletes can have quite a high HRV and then as we get older as I said it tends to decrease but there is a healthy gauge and you can look online just kind of like what's a, what's a healthy HRV for my age and you can see you know, what that is. Uh, but generally speaking, if it's too low for your age, then uh, it increases your risk for heart disease, it increases your risk for uh, more stress, depression, not having a nice, stable mental well being, also decreases uh, sports performance, and very importantly, it decreases your ability to repair after any illness or injury. So it, it kind of hits you on a bunch of different fronts emotions, heart, uh, rep repairing ability, and then um, fitness. Okay, so all these things are extremely important. So HRV is very important. And when we look at what slows the heart, that's the autonomic nervous system, which is mostly uh, represented by your vagus nerve. And that's, and the parasympathetic, sorry, the parasympathetic nervous system has to do with rest, digest. So of course there's times of day that sh that's what you want to have operating. And then the sympathetic nervous system is fight or flight and get up and go. And there's definitely times of day you want that to be operating, but you, but you need that balance. So the HRV shows you that you have that uh, adaptability and that's, and that's very, very important. Uh, what else did I want to tell you? One thing, so when you're looking and measuring HRV, I have a, a whoop band here, so that's what tells me every day. You can have an aura ring, a Fitbit. There's a few different gadgets that you can get that help with this, but if you're not someone who has access to that, a, a test that you can do is just, you know, you're sitting, you're, you're comfortable, and then you decide, okay, 60 second sprint. How fast can you rev up to do a 60 second sprint? Now, if this is not an appropriate activity for you, don't do it, but you, you get what I'm talking about. And then after the 60 second sprint, come back to your desk or sit down and sort of, you know, get to work. How, how quickly are you able to rest, your heart's not pounding anymore, and you can focus and get back to work? So that's a nice, um, easy test without a gadget to see how your responsiveness is to these two parts of um, your nervous system. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, you don't have to have a gadget, but you do, you do know yourself. So you know if you're just constantly in fight or flight or if you're somebody who just can't rev up to get going and, and each of those are an imbalance and you'll tend to have a low HRV because of that, because you're not getting that variability. So if that's you and you want to optimize your HRV, then reach out, that's what we're here for. And it, as I said, it, it kind of really crosses a lot of aspects of your life and your health, so it's very worthwhile to optimize your HRV. I'm Dr. Vicki Peterson. Oh, please like and subscribe to the channel. That helps more people see our videos and I'll see you soon.